So here's the starting grid for the Napa 100 here at Knoxville Raceway in Iowa. On the front row, Russ Gamester and Brad Fox. Row number two, Bud Kading and Dave Darlin. In the third row, Tracy Hines and Donnie Beachler. Derek Davidson and J.J. Yaley make up row number four. In the fifth row, Brad Knopfsinger on the inside and Robbie Flock outside. In the sixth row, it's Dave Steele and Jack Hewitt. Seventh row, Paul White and Aaron Fight. Then Roger Rager and Brian Tyler will be carrying one of our onboard cameras. There's Tyler Walker, his scheduled 17th starting position. He too has an on board, and Michael Lewis will be to his outside. The 10th row consists of Tony Elliott and Jerry Coons Jr. Then Rich Tobias Jr. and Jerry Niemeyer in row number 11. The 12th row, Ricky Shelton and Eric Gordon. And back in the last row, Jason McCord and Ed Carpenter. So there are your 26 starters. Tyler Walker did pull into the infield while we were doing that, so he is not going to get a start this race. He will finish last. And there is Brad Box. He led more laps than anybody else here last year. Uh, he did a great job. He crashed earlier in the year back in April in a sprint car race in Indiana, and this is his first time out, but he certainly picked up uh, exactly where he left off. He started second last year, and that's exactly where he starts this year. Walker is out of the car, talking with car owner Johnny Vance there, and it appears to be now a 25-car starting field. So Tyler Walker, again, uh, suffers a disappointment. He has had some uh, rather dismal showing so far this year. He was 29th at Indianapolis Raceway Park, next to last, and he finished last at Nazareth, and he's going to finish last here tonight. So in two of the last three events, he finishes last and in the other one he finished next to last and there is roger rager who we we talk about as uh being in the over 50 group but uh he still stays pretty sharp by running some races back in his uh, hometown of minnesota or his home state of minnesota well he he actually quit racing for several years but about two years ago he came back started running sprint cars up there in minnesota and i think he actually won the championship up there in the white soda group a couple of years so we will have an onboard camera tonight with Brian Tyler from Parma, Michigan, who starts in the 16th position. Well, we've got 100 laps of racing to go for you in the Napa 1 here and here, 100 here at Knoxville Raceway. Nice looking group of cars as they come slowly through turns number three and four, and the green flag is waved. Here we go for 100 laps on this half mile track at Knoxville. Right away, Brad Fox. Oh, he goes to the middle of the racetrack and stood it to the top. I thought he would go right straight to the top of the racetrack. He ran right through the middle and got the jump on everybody going down into turn number three. So once again, Brad Fox jumps off to the lead and we're on board with Brian Tyler as he is up on the high side of the racetrack. Here they come down for the completion of lap number one, and it is Fox and Russ Gamester running on the bottom in second position and now a three-way battle for the top spot that's katie right there in the middle three abreast katie running the center of the racetrack seems to be a little bit quicker than either one of the other two right now as he grabs the lead katie and now gamester are fighting for the lead up front while brad fox and darlin in very similar looking cars are running in the third and fourth position down into turn three they go and katie has the advantage as they head for the straightaway once again. And all of a sudden, the bottom of the racetrack appears to be the fastest way around. Although, uh, Kading's running kind of right in the middle, everybody else running right down around the bottom, and that's where Dave Darwin's moved up from uh, his starting position up in the third. And here's the battle for second. That is Darwin trying to get around Russ Gamester. Garland starting back in row number two, and he's uh, he's moved up a little, little bit. Meanwhile, Brad Fox keeps falling back. You can see the other blue car back there about in fifth or sixth spot. Yeah, he's fallen actually back to sixth spot, and it's about to lose that. So not uh, a good start right now for Brad Fox. You can see the battle back here in the middle of the pack is... That's, that's J.J. Yaley, Brad Knopfsinger in the black car, Yaley in the white car, and uh, Brad Fox loses another spot. See the track.
track is rather hard and slick at this point. With all the racing that has gone on so far here tonight. That battle raging on between the 67 car of Yaley and the 40 of Brad Knopsinger. Stay with us for more of the Napa 100 from Knoxville, Iowa. Right now, it's Bud Kading up front. We're under caution here at Knoxville. It's Kading, Gamester, Darlin, Knopsinger, and Yaley, the top five, with nine laps completed. And we went to the caution because Jason McCord spun and did a very mild Tommy tip over and he's uprighted and back in the race so no damage to the car and he is ready to go once again and we are too soon yeah he just got in down on that berm on the inside of the racetrack and uh, got the uh, front end up on him it just kind of tipped over on him but uh, like you said they tipped it back over and he's running again there is Robbie Flock in the number five car who is currently shown in 14th position he is a three-time winner so far this year in the USAC Western Midget Competition, and that moves him to second all the, on the all-time win list in the Western Division, passing recently Billy Boat. And that's kind of a resurgence for him. He had kind of a tough year the last couple of years, but uh, looks like he's back on track, at least on the West Coast, and uh, running pretty good here tonight. I just want to mix, mention that uh, we're very happy to be here in Knoxville. We want to thank Ralph Capitani and his whole crew here, the Bear Board and everybody, for having us back out here. And uh, they're promoting very hard their 1,200 pound nationals that we're going to have here on July 27th and 28th. It's, it's kind of a new concept. It's been a long time component of a weight rule, which we do have in the Silver Crown cars and the Sprint cars. And uh, that's one reason he's putting on this 1,200 pound nationals. And we're ready to go back to racing as the pace truck has pulled off and Bud Kading leads him down. By the way, Kading led 78 laps at Springfield last year on the mile there, 32nd to Jack Hewitt. And right now, Kading is the leader. And we see some cars running up on the cushion, but most of them down on the bottom. Almost everybody went right to the very bottom of the racetrack. That was Brad Fox, the blue car that went to the top. Now Tracy Hines. And the black number 37 also goes up around the top trying to find a way around because you don't want to just stay in line. But uh, the first two or three cars all running to the very bottom. That is Beechler running to the inside of Hines. And does Beechler have a flat left rear or is it just a right rear? Well, he's, uh, I don't know, it looks like he's got that thing pretty low. They might, they just run very, very low pressure. He might have just let that thing down. They might have let it down to six or seven pounds because it was so slick out there. But when you do that, you got to be careful. You don't want that thing going flat on you. And now here is Gamester, who's making a race of it. He comes to the inside of Kading, but Kading slams the door on him, going into turn number three. And that's Darlin back there in third. Brad Knopfsinger running fourth, and J.J. Yaley is in fifth position. Well, when you're running the bottom, you got to make sure you stay right on the very bottom. Look at this. He climbs up that He's bank. He's got him. <laughs> and Kading just got off of there about a half a car length wide, and Russ Gamester went right up on that bank on the inside, used it to his advantage, and went right up by him. A bit of a burn there, and Knopsing, or rather uh, Gamester, took advantage of it and made the pass. Now we've got a battle for second as Kading goes to the high side, and Darlin stays on the bottom. Yeah, there's Knopfsinger. He's come up to fourth position. Hines back to fifth, and Beachler in sixth. So Hines is, uh, he's moved up several positions. Let's watch him for a while up here on the high side of the racetrack. Maybe he's got some moisture up there that is to his liking and to the car's liking. Well, this racetrack is going to change a couple of times during this, uh, this 100 laps. So if you're the guy that figures out the fast way first, you're going to have a big advantage. And it's a lot easier when you're running back there than it is when you're running it first. Because if you're running it first, you've got to run where you're at until somebody shows you they're faster. Take a look back through the field and see what's happening. Well, there's a big angle of cars. That is Dave Steele in the 19. The 5 car belongs to Robbie Flock, and we're on board with Brian Tyler. A whole bunch of these guys are very, very close. You can see several of the guys running right down about the bottom. That's Tyler, who's right down on the very bottom, even climbing up on that inside bank just a little bit, trying to stay low. This is 13th, 14th, and 15th right here. That's Rager, 
Tyler, Steele, Flock, and Jerry Coons Jr. running 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th. On board with Tyler once again as we look back, and that's Flock who's also trying to get that left front tire up on the little bit of a berm that's built up on the bottom of the racetrack. Well, before long, these guys are going to wear this bottom out. Sooner or later, the bottom's going to go completely away. I think you're going to see the cushion come back in. The guy that picks the right time to move up there is going to have the big advantage, though. That's now Roger Rager behind him. That's got around him going down that last straightaway. Look how low Rager runs down the straightaway. He's trying to stay in the moisture down at the very bottom of the racetrack going down the straightaway. That's the reason he's running so low. Flock in 15th. Brian Tyler running in 12th position. Right behind him is Rager and then Coons in that red car with the yellow down tubes on it. And there is Brad Knopfsinger in the number 40 car as he is in a battle for fourth position. So with 22 laps completed now here at Knoxville, it's still Russ Gamester leading the Napa 100. Welcome back to Knoxville, Iowa. This is the Napa 100 for the Coors Light Silver Bowl Division of USAC. And we're watching this battle between the number 67 car of J.J. Yaley and Tracy Hines. Yaley down on the bottom and Hines up on the high side in the black number 37. And if you run in either one of those grooves, you've got to be very careful not to make a mistake. If you make a mistake on the bottom, you get off of the off that very, very bottom, you're just going to run slower. If you make a mistake up at the top and you get into the fence, it could be much, much worse. Right now, Tracy Hines is running that cushion up there pretty much to perfection. He's got the right rear right in the wet dirt. It's just such a long way around there that you've got to be running quite a bit faster in order to make that work. Well, Hines' best finish this year in the Silver Bullet Division was at Indianapolis Raceway Park. He was the fastest qualifier there and ended up in third spot. He also had a top ten finish at Irwindale coming home in eighth. You can see how very little cushion there is after all the racing that's gone on on this racetrack tonight. So, really, uh, he's walking a very thin line. <laughs> the barrier. He's right on the edge, believe me, very much on the edge, but he is gaining on Kading right now. Kading running, still running on the bottom of the racetrack, and he has gained on him in just about every corner, ever so slightly. Battle for third position now, Kading and Hines, and looks like that Tracy is going to be able to pass. Indeed, he does. So he moves up to third spot now. It's Gamester, Darlin, then Hines, then Kading, then Yaley. Hewitt, meanwhile, is back here in the sixth position. He's usually kind of a rim rider, but looks like he's running right in the middle of the racetrack. And he has uh, moved up a lot of positions since, uh, since the race started. He is the all-time career win leader in this division with 23 victories. However, this is his first start in this division this year. He did win once last year in Springfield on the mile and finished second at Indianapolis and fifth at the Knoxville race here. He started 12th, and uh, what's kind of impressive is he's running right smack in the middle of the racetrack. Usually that's kind of no man's land. You either want to be right on the bottom or right on the top. And you can see there's even some marbles up in that, that middle section of the racetrack. He's so far made that part of the racetrack work pretty well for himself. 30 laps have been completed. Tony Elliott, meanwhile, is now in 10th position. He started back in the 19th spot. So Tony has moved up nicely here in the first 30 laps of the race. Yeah, he has moved up very well. Let's, uh, I just wanted to mention, too, that uh, Hewitt, is on the American Racer tire. That's I think he and Brian Tyler are the only two guys running that tire, so that's maybe the reason he can run the middle of the race track. Well, let's see what's going on up front. Well, it's now a battle between Darlin and Gamester for the lead, and Darlin is going to come out of the second quarter down the back stretch with the lead. Darlin is in that blue car on the bottom side and has the lead right now over Russ Gamester. Well, there's just so many lap cars up there, and he's been able to kind of weave through them while he's on the bottom of the racetrack. Gamester, meanwhile, stays up on the top of the racetrack. 
That's Eddie Carpenter. The Darlin's going by right now. So uh, Darlin really get through the traffic a little better than Gaines is at this point. Carpenter has lost a lap, so has Dave Steele, so has Brad Fox, who jumped off to a very early lead, but began to drop back quickly. That is, I believe, Roger Rager. Yep, Rager, yes, who's is. running in 18th position, is also about to get lapped by Dave Darlin. Well, Darlin, he knows that Rager's running right around the bottom, so he's going to have to go to the top. He can't stay down there if he's going to block the way, so he's got to go around the, race, the top of the racetrack to try to make that pass. Darlin has seven career wins in this division, was the 1997 champion of the series and finished second in point standings in this division last year. And Kading now has just taken the lead from Darlin. He's come through there like a house of fire just right here in the middle of this, uh, this race when everybody was kind of tiptoeing through the traffic. He just kind of got in the middle of the racetrack and blew by everybody. Now Darlin gives a challenge. Oh, he got that's Gamester. It is indeed. Russ Gamester, who was running up front, battling for second position, and he spins and brings out the caution here on lap 36. Here are the top 10 after 40 of 100 laps in the Napa 100. Darlin, Kading, Yaley, Hines, and Hewitt. The top five, and then six through 10, Knopfsinger, Paul White, Beachler, Tony Elliott, and Brian Tyler. Tony Elliott's come from way back. He started 19th position, so he's uh, gained a lot of spots. You had started back in 12th. So and very often we'll see Tony Elliott running the uh, bottom side of the racetrack in some of the sprint races that we go through throughout the year. That's exactly where he is right now, running on the bottom of the racetrack. Green flag comes out. We are back to competition as, once again, Darlin stays on the bottom. And Kading works up high in the white car, and Hines works up high in the black car. Yaley in the white oh, car. Yaley took third, or almost did. Yeah, he did take third. He's staying right on the bottom of the racetrack as well. You can see if you're right on the very bottom, there is some mud down there, a little bit of black dirt that you can get a hold of. But boy, if you just slip a little bit, it costs you big time. Meanwhile, Kading comes up to make a challenge on Darlin. Uh, he's been pretty aggressive up there on that cushion. He's been running in there pretty hard. And the big advantage is usually getting off of the corner. But off of two, he doesn't seem to have near the advantage as he does coming off of four. Kading's best finish this year in this division was at Nazareth. He finished 12th at a 17th place finish at Indianapolis Raceway Park. See that he is running a lot further up there on the top side than Dave Darlin is. Yeah, so turn two is very tough for him. He's just not getting very good uh, bike coming up there. Three and four, he's he's a little faster than Darlin. But right now, if you're Darlin, until he goes until he goes around you, you got to stay on the bottom. So uh, that's the fastest place for you right now. Dave Darlin won a test in an IRL car last year after winning the USAC Sprint Car Race at Toledo, Ohio in Ron Himmelgarn's car, and we will return there again this year for that race, and once again, an IRL ride will be offered to the winner. And right now, it is just about as close as you can get, although the cars aren't running any ways close to each other. They are very close in terms of who has the lead. Yeah, Katie uh, seems to be making a little ground on him. He's he just very slowly but surely gained a car length on him, and it's taken him about five laps to do it. So if either one of these guys makes a mistake, uh, he's, oh, there, Dave Darlin just made the mistake. He got up in the slick stuff, and that's going to give the lead to Brent Kading going down the back straight. And so now is Kading going to move to the bottom, do you think? I don't think so. I think if I'm passing him up here, I'm going to stay up here until somebody comes and shows me there's a faster way to do it. And now he comes at least to the middle of the racetrack, but once again goes up high. Still running in third is Yaley, and then it's uh, Tracy Hines in fourth. There comes Tony Elliott. Here is Hewitt. Now that's the 50 car shell. He's being lapped, I believe. 20 car is Elliott. He's in the fifth position. So uh, Paul White now running in sixth position, that white number 10 car. He just passed uh, Jack Hewitt for that spot. There is Tony Elliott, who runs in fifth position right now. That's White in the uh, white number 10 car right behind him. 
And he's come up uh, quite a few positions here in the last couple laps as well. And then behind White is Jack Hewitt running in seventh position. Tyler is in eighth. Donnie Beachler running in ninth. And Brad Knopfsinger is in tenth position. On board once again with Brian Tyler. And you can see Brian Tyler that he's uh, he's really having not a lot of trouble right down the bottom. He's really trying to hang on that very bottom of the racetrack just so he can get a good bite coming off the corner. Well, we are a little bit one lap past the halfway mark. 51 laps are completed right now. Look at Paul White. He is battling right now with Tony Elliott, both up working with some lap cars. There's the battle for second position. Actually, it's a three-way battle for second spot. Yaley down low and up high is Hines and Darlin. Yeah, Darlin's moved up on the racetrack now since he's got, got passed up there. He moved to the top of the racetrack, but Yaley's still on the very bottom of the racetrack and seems to be able to make that work pretty well as he got around uh, both Hines and Darlin. The leader of the race, Bud Kading, has pulled away rather comfortably from these three as they continue to battle for position. Wow. Uh, Tracy now moves down to the middle of the racetrack to see if he can do anything down there, but uh, nothing, nothing happened. He's right back to the top right away. So we continue to watch this battle for third position. As Yaley now has the second spot. Yeah, he's uh, pretty comfortable that second position right now. Hines just can't find a way though. He's he's run the top almost the whole race. He's the only person out there that just went right straight to the top and never deviated. He's run everything up there the whole time. He'll gain a little bit and he'll lose a little bit just depending on how the track's running. What, uh, is, is tire management a concern on the dirt as much as it is on the pavement in a 100-lap race? I don't think it's near as much uh, trouble here as it is uh, as it would be on, a, on like a 100-lap race on a mile racetrack where you might wear them out. On this racetrack, you're not going to wear the tires out. You're not going to get them too hot. You just have to get them And warm. Hines has a problem, it would appear. Or the caution is out, I'm sorry. The 32 car of Aaron Fike has stopped down here in turn number four, so that's going to bring out another caution. We started 21st and finished 7th in this race last year, making the biggest gain as we go back to green flag racing. And up on the top is Katie, and, and we have a car in the fence, and the red flag has come out. Well, once again, that is... Uh Aaron Fike, who uh, looks like he's gotten into the fence, pulled into the end. Sure. Obviously, the suspension is broke on yeah. the car. I, I don't know. I assume that there was a flip because the red flag is displayed only when uh, there is a flip, and therefore uh, some medical attention may be needed. We'll watch the lower left here. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, I yeah. guess he did get upside down. I got into, uh, evidently got into another car, getting into the corner, <laughs> and uh, got over a wheel, turned that thing side for side, and broke the front end out from under it. So he's walking around, and he's okay. That's the good news. So next time around will be the conclusion of lap number 62. Back to competition. Are you surprised that we didn't see more tire changing, Larry, during that red? Yeah, I figured everybody would put on the stock tire. Look at Tracy Hines right there in the middle of the pack. Boy, he just blew by a bunch of those lap cars as well as Dave Darlin as he uh, just went right through the middle of the racetrack and gained a lot of spots. That's Russ Gamester running down there on the bottom of the 51 car, but remember, he is a lap down, running in 15th position. So it's still Katie working up on the high side, and Tracy Hines also up there. J.J. Yaley is running in the second spot. Yes, and the, uh, there Yaley has moved up to the top now. There's Hines right behind him. Yaley went down on the bottom at the other end. You can see he's hanging the back end just a little bit more than Tracy Hines is right now. So he's running the high side down in three and four, and the low side down here in one and two, Yaley is. And 
That's just the opposite of what they were running earlier in the night, and it's because turn two high side has gotten so slick up there, they're not getting off turn two very well up on the top side. Well, now he stays down at the bottom at both ends of the racetrack, and he does maintain that second position. So J.J. Haley, who finished second here last year, is running in that position again here this year, but instead of Jay Drake in the lead, it's Bud Kading in the lead. There he is, Gamester, but again, he is not on the lead lap. Yes, and uh, meanwhile, Kading running right around the top has just uh, managed to pull away just a little bit. Brian Tyler, meanwhile, is up to eighth position. He started 16th and is running in a whole bunch of cars there. Donnie Beachler is up ahead of him, so is Elliot, Darlin isn't up there too far, and White is also just ahead of Tyler. And he still runs the bottom of the racetrack. He's been running the bottom of the racetrack pretty much all night long. He just hangs in down there trying to make way. Now that he moves up right in the middle of the racetrack, but he doesn't make much time up there. Really. Jerry Coons Jr. there running beside him, the 35 car. You see him reach up and tear off one of those tear-offs, which, uh, of course, eliminates the uh, mud that's flown back in his face, and he has clear vision once again. Yeah, he's not, uh, it just doesn't look like he's hooked up in the middle of the racetrack the way he wants to be. He, he gains a little bit, and then he loses a little bit, but he's not real, real fast. Uh, right there in the middle of that racetrack. Look how much he works every single lap. Back, forth, back, forth, just trying to maintain the car in the correct spot. Well, they uh, created a thing called an oxygenator. They put it on some race car drivers. They found that race car drivers, really, they're in a race car working like this, but they uh, they work as hard as a marathon runner or an extended swimmer, swimmer that runs uh, or swims a long distance. So they do work very hard in the race car. Close right there, you saw a wheel down to the inside of it. That was Davidson, I believe, that was now up ahead of him, but he came real close to banging wheels with him there. 70 laps about to be completed by our leader, Bud Katie. And at up front, it's basically the same. Yaley and Pines. White has moved up to fourth, and Beachler now. Donnie Beachler running in the fifth position. And that was Robbie Flock in the five car that just went around Brian Tyler. He too running right at those oh, man right in front. That's Tobias and he spun and no yellow. And meanwhile, we have a pass for the lead as Yaley tries to wrestle it away from Kading. And is he going to do it? Yes, he is. Well, he's persevered on the bottom of the racetrack. Just run around there very silently, very smoothly very slickly finally he did make the pass and you can see that Kading is uh, doing everything he can <laughs> to get that lead back now he's going to be able to gain on him a little bit here but coming off of two is the is the worst place on the racetrack with yep. the high groove right now yep look how far Yaley pulls ahead coming off of corner number two well Dick Tobias did a great job of doing a 360 off of turn number two Toby Tobias did, did, did not bring out a caution and that is what apparently was at least one cause of, of Yaley being able to get the lead. So he now has a bit of an advantage over Kading. Hines, White, and Beechler complete the top five with 27 laps to go. We are back at Knoxville Raceway in Iowa. Bob Jenkins, Larry Rice, and Brian Gerster with you in the closing laps of this Napa 100 for the USAC Coors Light Silver Bullet Division. Down to Brian Gerster, who's with Bob East. Bob, you guys got one to go before you go green. You're inside 10 laps. You guys stuck with the tire that you had at the beginning of the race and uh, 44 car. They went to a little softer tire. Yeah, we decided to decide Sipe that one, it looked pretty good. We'll just go, go with that because it had a little heat in it and it wasn't sealed over yet. Did it fire off good on the last restart for him? It took about two laps and then come in good. All right, well, good luck. Okay, guys, watch these first two laps and let's see if that tire starts off again like it did the last time and uh, maybe the 67 car will be able to take it to the end. Okay, green flag is going to come out at the conclusion of lap number 92. Some cars have dropped out of the race since we had the uh, commercial break. 
Russ Gamester is out, and so is Derek Davidson. And the green flag does come out, and let's see who's going to win this battle between high and low. It's Yaley on the low side with Tracy Hines now taking second place from Bud Kading. But now Hines moves up to the high side. Yeah, he moved up to the high side very, very quickly once he got around Bud Kading. Kading, when he put on that softer tire, he might have out-tricked himself because it should be faster the first couple of laps, but he actually lost his spot with that restart. So, uh, not working nearly as well as he had hoped. And you can see Paul White coming into the picture there also in that white number 10 car on the bottom of the racetrack. That is the fourth place car at the moment. And he's really running well around the bottom of the racetrack. Has been uh, for the last several laps. And now that he's moved into third spot, yeah. it looks like he's working very hard on Tracy Hines. Indeed, he's taken third away from Kading. And now he moves alongside Tracy Hines, although Hines is a long way from him at the high side of the racetrack. But J.J. Yaley continues to lead this thing. And Donnie Beachler has pulled into the pit area. He was running up in the top five. And a similar situation that happened in Indianapolis last week. He had moved up from the, what, the ninth row, star on the outside of the ninth row, and moved up into the top ten when he had mechanical problems. Here tonight, he has run in the top ten virtually all evening and drops out here late with a mechanical problem. So we continue to watch this race now for second position. White on the left of your screen, Tracy Hines up high in the black 37, and Bud Kading there also. And Paul White makes up a lot of ground once again coming off of turn number two. Well, he almost gets into a car that pulled clear up into the infield, almost got back on the racetrack, but look at this. White now has moved in to that uh, second position. And if you remember in Phoenix, Arizona, Paul White and Tracy Hines had a little altercation as they were running for uh, the lead down there. That's the race that White went on to win. He finished uh, ninth in the point standings last year in this division and was the Rookie of the Year in this division in 1999. 98 laps have been completed. One more to the white flag and two more to the finish of the race. And there they are. Now it's a side-by-side -side battle between Kading in the 44 and Tracy Hines in the 37. White flag out. One more lap to go. There's Yaley. He's got a oh, nice lead. Look at Dave Darlin. He's down on the inside. He's challenging both of those guys in that bottom groove. So everybody has, still has a chance to run third right now because all three of those cars are very close. Let's see how things shake out here in the final half lap. J.J. Yaley will come off of corner number four and win the Napa 100. There's the checkered flag. Finishing in second position is going to be White, then Tracy Hines, then Darlin. Finish in fourth. And Katie Grant back to the fifth spot after uh, leading a lot of this race. Kristen Yaley, J.J.'s wife, is ecstatic. It's the first win for a Bob East Brent Silver Bullet car on dirt since Chuck Gurney won at DuCoin in 1996. J.J. Yaley wins here after starting in eighth position. He's pulling into victory lane here at Knoxville. We'll talk with him in a moment. Well, the Coors Light Silver Bullet Series has completed another race here in Knoxville, Iowa, the Napa 100, and the winner is J.J. Yaley from Phoenix, Arizona. Let's go down to Victory Lane. Here's Brian. Well, J.J., you did an awful good job tonight. The bottom was good to you. Did uh, Bob keep you down there, or what was the story? No, we were communicating over the radio, and uh, you know, I ran a couple laps in the middle and the top, and I told him it looked good on the bottom. He said I was in control, do whatever I wanted, so... Uh, you know, we just stayed on the bottom there. Uh, in this place, you can get up on the berm and kind of stick the car a little bit better. And you know, the car was just working great down there. The engine ran superb all night. Uh, you know, we had to win this one for Gary Zeroni, my car owner. He's been in the hospital from a go-kart accident, and uh, this one's for him. Well, you weren't in this car the last time the, the Silver Bullet Series was on TV. You were in the 99 car. Are you going to be in this one the rest of the summer? Yeah, right now, uh, it looks like I get to keep my job in this car for the rest of the year, you know. Uh, it's a great opportunity for me to drive for uh, Gary Zeronian and Bob East wrenching on the car. The crew did a heck of a job tonight. Uh, the Park West team ASC car was just real fast. Well, congratulations, and I think Bob will keep you for at least one more <laughs> night, JJ. You did a good job. We got Tracy Hines over here and a few of the other guys, so let's take a, a quick walk over here and see what Tracy had to say about it. I think Tracy ran third here tonight. Tracy? 
that you were committed to the top, it looked like tonight, weren't you? Yeah, it's kind of a moral battle there after a while. You know, the guys started running the bottom, and they could get a run on you. We were just way too tight. It ended up um, the coil top off the left front of the coil came off. So it, it had probably had, um, you know, probably four or five turns out of the left front, which just put a ton of cross weight in it. And it was hard for me to keep running like that. But, you know, these guys raced real clean. Um, you know, J.J. got back about fifth or sixth and then got back up there. I was back about seventh at one time. I just figured if we stick to our game plan, we'd be in good shape. And Paul just kind of nipped me there at the end. Paul, how about that? Uh, you kind of snuck up there and got underneath. You guys can't seem to get away from each other. You had a good run. You ran second. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, heck, I figure if I run around him, I'll be up toward the front. So it pays better that way. <laughs> well, these guys put on a heck of a show. He's a tough Texan, but he's running the wimpy bottom. Everybody see that? <laughs> You can tell these guys really like each other. I'm going to let them keep talking, and then uh, I'm going to send them back up top. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Here are the top ten. J.J. Yaley wins the race, and Paul White finished second. Tracy Hines third, then Dave Darlin, and Bud Kading, who led a long way in this race, ended up finishing in the fifth position. Here is six through ten now. Tony Elliott sixth. Jerry Coons Jr. was seventh, followed by Eric Gordon, Robbie Flock, and Brian Tyler completed the top ten. Also